Hello everyone and welcome back to this tour video series on theory of computation. In this video, we're going to look at an exercise where we're asked to create an NFA that accepts a certain language. And the language that we want to accept here is the set of strings that look like XWX, where X is a letter and W is any string over zero one star. Okay, so what this is just saying is that the very first and the very last letter, very first and last letter must be the same. Okay, and the other thing that you'll notice here is that these strings have to be non-empty. So you could argue that the empty string would satisfy this condition, except that here we're clearly stating that X is a member of zero one, and so it cannot be empty, okay? And so like you did in DFAs, the very first thing to do when you're trying to build an NFA to accept a language, you want to look at what strings your machine is meant to accept. Right, so what are the shortest strings that you want to accept to accept? Well, we know that we have to start and end with the same letter, okay? And so the shortest strings that we can accept are zero, zero, and one, one, because in this case, the x is going to be 0, okay, and the string w is going to be the empty string. That's definitely allowed because w is in 0, 1 star, which means that w is any string over the alphabet 0, 1, including the empty string, right? So um, remembering the definition of the star operator, um, this tells us that w can be lambda, right, or the empty string. Similarly, x could have been the letter 1, right? So the shortest, the other shortest string that we want to accept is 1, 1, where x is the letter 1, and again, w is the empty string. Then you'll see that uh, the, the set of strings that are contained in the language um, can be sort of partitioned into two. So there is the partition where you start and end with zero, and then you can have any string w, or you start and end with one, and you can have any other string w, right? So um, this can be any string over zero, one, right? Okay, and then similarly here. So, if you were to construct a DFA, and so as an exercise, I highly recommend first trying to construct a DFA that accepts the above language. Let's call this language L that accepts L. So I'll leave that to you as an exercise. Try to do that. I highly encourage you to pause the video try to work through the, the logic of the DFA, and now we're going to actually do the logic of the NFA, okay? And so what's the idea of the NFA, okay? Um, it's essentially going to try to look for a string where it either starts with a zero or starts with a one, right? And so if this is your start state, either you, you start with a zero or you start with a one. You'll notice that the start state is not an accept, state and so i want to prevent my machine i want to prevent the nfa from accepting the empty string okay then we know that we have to have some form of of processing for the string w right some form of processing for the string w okay so i'll just leave that as an abstract box here where I say process 
w and then once you finish processing w you want to read what symbol well you want to read a zero right because you want to start and end with the same symbol and so once you reach the end of your string and remember what your nfa is doing is essentially what it can do is it can guess what the end of the string is right so it guesses that now it's at the end it goes to the next state right so it transitions with the zero to a final state if it was wrong then it hasn't finished reading all the string and so it jams and it rejects if it's right that can only happen if the zero was the last letter that it was reading and now it's entered the accept state in which case it would actually accept the string okay and then similarly for one you would again process w and you would process w in the same fashion as you would process the w uh, in this branch or this partition of the nfa right why because there is no distinction between how you partition um, or how you process w if the string started with a one or if it started with a zero right okay so once you finish that processing again you your NFA can guess, right? It tries all the possible, you can think of it as trying all the possible um, combinations or, or choices of processing of the string, or you can just think of it as guessing the right place, right? So when you're thinking of an NFA, you can either think of it as trying all possibilities, okay? And then at some point, it's definitely going to hit the right one if that string, um, should be accepted by the NFA and the NFA is designed correctly. Or you can think of it as always guessing right, okay? So it can guess right within uh, certain configurations, right? So what I mean by that is that it can't um, guess how long the string is, right? So it has to be able to do things that require finite memory, okay? And so we'll talk about how we can get over that, how we can create computational machines that need more than finite memory, okay? Um, but that's for another set of videos, right? In this case, we're just saying that it guesses the end of the string. And that's a very easy thing to guess and then check, right? You guess the end of the string. If you guess correctly, that means you have nothing else to read. If you guessed incorrectly, that means that there's still stuff to read, so your NFA jams. So then you try another guess, right? And so that's what you're going to do here again this state here you can think of as the end of the string. And then similarly here, this is also guessing the end of string. So end of string, that's just EOS, that's just the acronym for end of string, okay? And then uh, in this case, if it guesses correctly, then we send it to an accept state, okay? So all we need to do now is replace uh, this processing of W, right? But when we think about it, W can be anything, right? It, it can be any string. And so we don't actually care what the, the, the value of the string W is, as long as there's some string, it can also be empty, right? But as long as there's zeros or ones, um, you keep churning through that string, right? That string W until you hit the before last, I guess until you hit the last symbol, once you hit the last symbol, you transition to the accept state, okay? And so what that actually looks like, if we replace, let's use a different color, if we replace the processing of W here, oops, then what that will look like is that just looks like um, ah, a single state, right? And it's just going to churn through W, right? So this state here is meant to process the string W. So you read a zero, right? You go through each of the strings in W, and then at some point you guess the end of the string, and then if there's a zero, you can transition to the accept state, and then you accept the string, right? Um, if instead you start with a one, then it's going to be the same thing, right? It's going to be the same thing exactly the same thing, right? So it's going to be this state where you process the string W, right? You go through all of the symbols in the string W 
And then once you guess the end of the string, if there's a one, then you can transition you can transition to the accept state. Okay. So for example, if you had the string uh, one zero one um, one zero zero one, uh, let's say one, right? So you would start here. This is where you would start. You would read the one. You would go to this state, right? So now you're reading the zero. You read the zero with this transition. Then you go to the next. You read the next symbol, but you stay at the same state. Then you transition to reading the next symbol. So that's a one. So again, you read the one. And then for the last one, instead of using this transition, right, you guess that it's the end. Um, and because you're reading a one, you can, you can transition to the accept state. And so this leads to an accept, right? Remember the NFA is guessing, right? Or in other words, it's trying all the possibilities. If one of the possibilities, if one of the walks through the NFA leads to a final state, then that's an accept. And so another computation that the NFA could have gone through is it could have read the one, then it could have read the zero, the zero, then it could have read, instead of using, it could have read the one, but instead of using this transition, it could have used this transition, right? But if it's reading this one and it uses this transi transition, that means that now it should be reading another letter, but there is no transition at this state. And so even though you jam in a final state, because you've jammed and you've not read the whole string, that walk doesn't lead to an accept, okay? So an example of a string that would be rejected would be maybe something that starts with zero. Um, then maybe you have one, one, zero, and then it doesn't end with the same symbol. So because here you started with a zero, it doesn't end with a zero, i.e. it ends with a one, right? And so any way you try to go through this computation, you're not going to get to the accept state, right? So if you read this zero, you have to transition here, right? Um, then you read these two ones. You can't use this transition, so you have to use these two. Okay. So now you're here. Maybe you can cheat and go to this accept state. But if you do that, right, then you're meant to read this other letter one. You have no transition at this point for the letter one. So that leads to your NFA jamming. So that means that you don't actually accept the string, right? So even though you can reach uh, the accept state, you also need to consume all your input. And that's not what you're doing. So then that uh, walk doesn't lead to um, an accept. And then if you had for this, for reading this letter, you had used this transition, then for reading the one, you'd have no choice but to use this transition again. And you would end up in this state because this is not an accept state. That walk would also lead to reject. And so because you have no um, computations where you start your string, you start your processing at the initial state, where you read the whole string, and you end up in a state, because you never end up in a state that's a final state, right? This leads to a reject. Okay? And so this is the sort of nifty convenience of the NFA is first of all, the guessing of the end of the string, and also the fact that here you can transition here for zero or one, and you have a transition here for zero. So together, this is what's guessing the end of the string, and also what's matching the first letter with the last letter, okay? Um, and so I'm sure if you've tried to do the, NFA, the DFA, um, that it was slightly more complicated um, and that you had to deal with a few more cases um, than with this NFA, okay? And so you can see that an NFA, really what it's giving you, it appears to be giving you convenience. Right? So the NFA gives you convenience of drawing machines. And so in the following videos, we'll see that that's in fact the only real thing that an NFA brings as an advantage 
In terms of computational power, we'll see that NFAs and DFAs are exactly equivalent. And to do that, we're going to see that there's a way to convert any NFA to a DFA where the DFA accepts exactly the same language as the initial NFA. So that's going to be in the next video, but this video we've essentially talked about how to create an NFA that accepts the language.